Till had come down from Chicago to visit his relatives. This is Mose Wright. I am the uncle of Emmett Lewis Till. Sunday morning, about 2.30, someone called at the door. And I said, who is it? And he said, this is Mr. Bryant. I want to talk with you and the boy. And when I opened the door, there was a man standing with a pistol in, in one hand and a flashlight in the other hand. And he asked me, did I have two boys there from Chicago? I told him I have. And he said, I want it. I want the boy that done all that talk. And they marched him to the car and they asked someone there, was well, this is the right boy? And the answer was, here. And they drove toward money. And I found out about it 9.30 Sunday morning. I was in bed. I got up, called my mother when I got the news because I had every decision I had ever made or every crack that I had ever been in, it took her to get me out of it. And I took that one to mama too because I didn't know what to do. Mother told me to come right over and she would start making calls. And I got over there as quickly as I could make it. And that wasn't very long. By this time, everyone in money knew what had happened. Emmett Till had broken one of segregation's rules. He talked fresh to a white woman in a store. He was only 14, he was a northerner, and he didn't understand. He went into the store uh, to buy some candy. Before we went in, he had showed the boys around his age. He had some picture of some white kids that he had graduated from. That was, you know, female and male. So he told the boys down there, you know, hey, you got around this store? This one must have been around about maybe 10 to 12, you know, youngsters around there, that the girls was his girlfriend, you know. So one of the, the local boys said, hey, there's a girl in their store there, so I bet you want to go in there and talk to her, you know. So he went in there to, you know, get some candy. So when he was leaving out the store, after buying the candy, he told us, say, bye, baby. And the next thing I knew, one of the boys came up to me and say, uh, say, man, you got a crazy cousin. He just went in there and said bye to that white woman. And that's when um, this man, I was playing checker with this older man, I guess he must have been around about 60 or 70. He jumped straight up and said, boy, say, y'all about to get out of here, say, that lady come out of that store and blow y'all brains off. Where is it? The, the sheriff came and told me they had found a body at Phillip and wanted me to go and identify the body, which I did. And we found the body with, with didn't have on any clothes at all. The body was so badly damaged that we couldn't hardly just tell who he was, but he happened to have on a ring with his initial, and that cleared it up. The body was shipped home, back north to Chicago, where Mamie Till Bradley insisted on an open casket funeral. So all the world can see, she said, what they did to my boy. Oh. 
Jet magazine showed Till's corpse, beaten, mutilated, shot through the head. A generation of black people would remember the horror of that.